in the early 60s, I discovered within myself a ball of silence. And in that ball of silence, there were many mammalian noises. And I wanted to hear and create those sounds. And I realized that it was going to be a devotional act and that I was going to write 99 poems in a language other than English. Marilyn Monroe, today thou hast passed the dark barrier, diving in a swirl of golden hair. I hope you have entered a sacred paradise for full, warm bodies, full lips, full hips, and laughing eyes. Ah, gruel, roar, know that, oh, oh, farewell, perfect mammal, fare thee well from thy silken couch and dark day. Ah, gruel, ah, rugar, na ut is farewell, moor, drun, fara, rahur, rahur, Rahur the ah, oh, oh, thar, no grurar. I, want, I wanted to make poetry that was, uh, that didn't have images in the, in the sense that Shelley calls mimetic images. In the sense that where the image describes something in the real world. But in the sense where the, the sound of the poetry itself creates an image in the mind, in the body, in the muscles of the body. And I created a melody that was also an image that imprinted itself in the body physically. They are a doing of the only writing that is possible for me to achieve now. In the plane, on the way to Mexico City, the feeling of energetic stillness, a reservoir and universe of it, came over me, a kind of contentment with my silence and the quietness of all about me, half of the newfound pleasure I attribute to the Tantras. I sat in the observation room of the plane and looked into the pale brown, near dawn void of earth, sky, space, of mountain and cloud. I had the feeling within me, for the first time in my life, I was partly withdrawn from my senses. It was a full feeling. The tantras are like sketches, drawings of a painter. They're fast sketches, simply executed and kept. They make me happy to be working. I love to think of the red-purple rose in the darkness cooled by the night. We are served by machines making satins of sounds. Each blot of sound is a bud or a star. Body eats bouquets of the ear's vista. Gar, booty, ears, nose, eyes, deem thou. No, no, oh, hrur. Grrrr. I think, I think those tones are unique to Michael. There's, you know, it's a kind of a glossolalia speaking in tongues that he found uniquely to himself. Um... Although I know he does say that if you just read these sounds, you'll find something. You can find something, but you feel sort of silly when you're doing it. I could never in a million years read this poetry. And very honestly, <coughs> I don't think anyone can read it but Michael. Uh, when he reads them, you really understand what they're about. You know, I, I, I used to pick them up and look at them, and I thought, gee, this is wild. It's just sounds. But then when you hear him do them, you realize that there, there's these great big long glissandos and things that, that happen in them that are really musical architectures. Each block of sound is a bud or a star. Body eats bouquets of the ears vista. Gar, booty, eyes, ears, nose, deem thou roar, or not. The machines are too dull when we are lion poems that move and breathe when we grow. Andri Maitan Sharu Sridano Dimdes Wan Ethus Ro. Silence the eyes, become the senses, dry.
my roar from the fresh repugnant. We had a poet friend who let him come in early and read to the lions uh, without the crowds around. Um, and that was very exciting. I still have a tape of those readings, and it was fun to put it on at full blast because it's very moving. Roar! 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 Hanji. Kirtoth Sharus Ritha no Dimid Ez Wan I Thuz Hro. I mean, it it could be Chaucer. Juan at April with the shore suit, the drict of March hath pierced to the root, and bathed every vein in swish liqueur. It's not so far from Chaucer. So I just I go with it. <laughs>